Hey there, Drayton Michaels, dog trainer, behavior technician, here to talk about session number two with Rudy, the reactive Bernie Doodle, who's about a year and a half of age. As you saw in the first video, we were gathering data, and he went over threshold a little bit, but in the second session, I was able to handle him, have him on leash with me, he was much more comfortable, and we got much better results with kids, traffic, and dogs. Let's take a look. Good job. Yeah, you're okay, good boy. Good job. You're okay. Yeah, what's going on? Are we friends yet? I had, I tried having it on his back for a little bit, the uh -huh. attachment, but I felt like the, it kept on getting tangled with him around him more. So I switched back to the front. Good boy. Good job. Here, hold that. Go ahead and see if you can hook that on his back. Okay, great. Take yours off. Away. Okay, how close how close was the dog? How close was the dog to you? It was pretty far away. Like he okay. was seeing it and he was engaged, that, That's he maybe why. Right? So if you have a lot of yes. If you have a lot of distance, a lot of times the dog won't care. Right? And that's the tricky thing about it is like mitigating your distance. So I marked and paid him for this guy over here. Might get something off the door shut if he shuts the door. Yes! Right? So you see how I predicted that? Right? Yes. I predicted when that door shuts, he's... Yes! So those are the kind of things like you want to get ahead of. Right? Knowing that, oh, a door shutting is going to get him. The, the, the truck starting is going to get him. Because let's say you miss three or four of those. And then the next truck comes by. He's going to be much more likely to react. So remember, anything that changes in the environment that you hear or see, he's gonna hear or see, and you gotta pay him for it. Notice that scent trumping that sound, right? Come on, let's go, come on. I also felt like I was needing to use the leave it command a lot. Sure. Like, you know, like to, in order to engage the yes, I felt uh, like I was overusing it because I felt like that was the only reliable way I was getting him. Yeah, if you use the leave it and then you mark yes, you're paying for the leave it, which is fine. But if you just use the yes marker, you're paying for the orientation to the stimulus. Right. Yes, you can't go wrong, right? You know, if you ask him to leave it and he disengages and you yes and treat, you get a disengagement. If he's staring at the thing and you're yesing and treating him and he's taking the food and standing under threshold, you're winning, right? You can't, it's almost impossible to screw it up. The only way you screw it up is you go too close or you let the duration build too much, which sometimes you don't have a, a choice. Sometimes you're kind of stuck and the duration is going to build. So might get something off this bucket loader to the left. All right, we got a guy getting right out of their car, so we're gonna move. So see, I'm preloaded, because I got the guy who might get out of his car, and I got the bucket loader. He's focused on scent, which is good. Dude shut his car off, so he might be getting out in a sec. Yes. Right? He's going to hear him or see him again when he shuts that door. Yes. Little kid with him. Yes. Right? Little kid stare. Yes. Right. Shoot them. Get them. disengaged on his own went back to the scent see that's a kind of a common scenario where let's say you don't give that any mind right up just a little let's say you don't give that any mind you don't even think about it and that guy gets out of his car he's here smelling something and that little girl gets out and you didn't know he had a little girl and she's staring at him and then he starts barking but if I get the door opening if I get the door shutting if I get the kid right away if I get all those mark and pays 
it's going to be a lot easier. We were five, ten feet maybe, maybe six feet, seven. We weren't that far away. Um, let's go this way, buddy. So, you know, a lot of this has to do, matter of fact, all of this has to do with the human being aware and having good timing. The better our timing is, the better the dog will do. And again, you know, a lot of times what happens is the dog doesn't bark at that one or the next one. But by the third package of people in cars, the dog's stressed. This way, bud. So again, I'm going to walk on this sidewalk, even though we might have some dogs come out of here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got like eight chances. Yes. All right, I'm going to pay him for this woman. She came out. She was staring. We got the guy in the orange shirt probably going to catch his attention. Yes. All right, popping off the marker, which is good. Yes. So he barely looked at that guy over there with the wheelbarrow, and I paid him. Right? Sub criteria. Got some guys down here to the right. Stand right behind me. Yes! Where are you going? Yes! So he's trying to get that scent. He's dropping his head. Leave it. So she's coming back this way. Leave it. Oops, sorry, 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 sorry. Stand behind me, then. You get the whole shot. Disengaged on his own. Yes. I don't care about the lunge, really. Yes. See why I have a short leash? Yes. Which is what I was talking about last time. Short leash, you get the food to his mouth. Yes. that dog for me. Just shoot down there, get that dog. Just stay in front of those trees for a point. Thanks. Cool. All right, kid, we'll get you in and get some water. So we saw the dog. Now, if you feel confident, big stress shake, right? Big stress shake. If you feel confident and you feel like you could, yes, and you feel like you could work a dog like that, then I encourage you to do it. But if you don't feel confident, or if you think, oh, that dog's barky, if they look at us, right? But you saw how I mitigated my distance and I set up. So you can do setups. This is a perfect place to do setups. I'm gonna make a bold bet. If I lived with this dog for three days, the lunging would stop and I'd start getting auto disengages, right? You know, use some of the, I, went, I ran out of turkey pepperoni. I'm using uh, these jerky treats by Romy. He worked for them just fine. The boy. All right, come on. And a couple times my foot got close to him and that's why he got scared. He's a sensitive beast. Sensitive beast. But he did great with that dog, right? But again, if I didn't have my leash here, when he lunged, now he's out six feet. Now I gotta go get the food to him. Versus if it's like this, he bounces out a foot, I can come right back and I can pay him. So I can get the counter conditioning. So your, your leash length when you're doing these counter conditioning protocols is really crucial. Come on, bud. 
You're okay. We'll go home. You're okay. <laughs> All right, so let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Why don't you hook him on to the front? Good boy. Good job. It's okay. Good boy. Good job. Give me the camera. Good job. Just grab the top of his harness and hook him on the front. And when he's fully hooked to you, then you can unhook me. All right, thank you, sir. Good job, buddy. You did good, kiddo.